So Clip Studio Modeler isn't something that may automatically be downloaded with Clip Studio Paint, uh, but it is a free add-on. Uh, all you gotta do is uh, go to the Clip Studio Net uh, website. There'll be instructions on how to download it. And once you have installed it, uh, it should show up where you have these programs. You've got Paint and then you'll see Modeler. And if you click on Modeler, uh, this default scene uh, should pop up. Now I've enlarged my screen so that everything is easy to read and we can take a look at the navigation. The, there, there is documentation, there are tutorials, but I've, I've found them to be a little bit um, oof, lacking in, in areas. So I'm just going to point out the main features of the screen because Modeler is actually pretty simple. So I'm just going to take you through it step by step. Now obviously what we're looking at here is something called new object and there's nothing on the screen except for this grid and what we call a widget. To the left of the screen, we've got our sub tools. On the right hand side at the top, we've got three key windows. We have a navigator, camera settings, and view settings. And we're going to be uh, looking at these uh, in just a moment. We'll start with the navigator. You'll see that there's this icon here, and this is actually our camera. If we click and drag it, okay, around there, you'll actually see that the uh, viewport changes because what we're doing is we're moving the camera around. Now, the distance, if we slide that, we can go further in, we can go further out, we can zoom in and zoom out, and this is the angle of view, so we can get some very warped angles or very flat angles, almost orth orthographic, if we wanted to uh, take a look at some orthographic pictures. But by default, it's uh, set to 45. Um, I'm not entirely sure what this corresponds to in terms of cameras. Now, the camera settings themselves, you can further tweak by you know, changing the X and the Y and the Z axis of where the camera sits. And the camera always points to the center or the widget. Uh, so that when you do this, you're actually moving the position of the camera, but it is what is known as a targeted camera. Finally, view settings are you know, what is enabled, what draw effects, and what shader we're using. And we'll take a look at this in a little bit when we import our first object. So I'm just going to shut this down and make a new object so everything is set to default. The next window that we want to look at is called Object Configuration. This is where we'll be doing a lot of our work. Okay, so it is split up into uh, several uh, small panels. Sketch basically just sort of means uh, that we are creating a material. What we'll be really looking at because we're working in 3D is Node. Everything else is grayed out because we haven't got any object information. So let's take a look at the root node and you'll see that you've got these three buttons down here, add new, add from file, add from material. We're going to be looking at the add from file because what we're hoping to do is download an FBX or an OBJ from somewhere and import it into Clip Studio Pro. Now, how do we do this? Well, first off, we need to go to something like Turbo Squid. And I found this here, it's apartment four, I think it's called, and it's a free model. And the details show us uh, what formats we can get. For Clip Studio Paint, two formats are usable. One is FBX and the other is OBJ. And this one happens to have both. So if we go to download uh, and you sort of have a Turbo Squid account, um, you'll get a download page, and these are all the models that I've downloaded over the past, I don't know, a few months or so. But here is our apartment four. If we hit this little plus here, we will actually see all of the model versions available to us. And so we can download an OBJ or an FBX, uh, which is what we want. So uh, why don't we go ahead and download the FBX? The, so I'm gonna click on that. It's going to save the file. Okay, and then we can open the file and I've got a little, uh, whatever this program is, it's a, some sort of a 3D paint thing in Windows to preview the FBX file. So I'll do this little create new project and then it will show up and I've got this 3D view that I can zoom in uh, and zoom out. I can right mouse click and I can see that there's this object that uh, is exactly as it looked, so I know that that is all working. Let's close that down. Let's go over to uh, Clip Studio Modeler, and under Object Configuration, we've gone Node. We go 
add from file and we can navigate to where we downloaded it and there is apartment 4 and we just go open and it comes in so now we're going to have to navigate back by pulling back the distance or we can just click this button here which it says view entire object we click on that and it doesn't look exactly how we expect now there's a couple of things we can do to change this view and if we go to view settings uh, enabled we can click on lighting and that will give us some lighting information and then drawing effects, we can do things like show outline or just see the wireframe. And then the shader, we can use uh, choose between flat, garrod, fong, or this one here, which is tune shading, but uh, this one's really, really stark. You can use one of these shading types and then uh, we can still take a look uh, around this model. We see that, yeah, we've got some faces that uh, uh, are clipping, but overall that model is, you know, Important. Now under root node, we get another folder called root node. This one is not editable because this is the parent root and this will always be called root node. Uh, but the one underneath called root node is basically the building. So we can double click on that and we can call this apartment block. Okay, so now that we know everything in this folder is in a hierarchy for this particular object. And you will see that we've got a lot of objects in here and you don't have to tr keep track of them all if you don't want to. The beauty of FBX files is that they often come in with all the other uh, models available. So you can just select say one part of the model and adjust it. Uh, let's center on the object. Now we've got this apartment block. The next one you'll see now that these are no longer grayed out. If we click on materials, you'll see default materials and you'll see that there's a lot of materials and they do come in duplicated. Luckily, Clip Studio Modeler knows that a lot of duplicate materials are going to be created and so it gives us this handy little merge same materials. If we click on that, now we can see that we've just got four basic materials, one, two, three, and material that have come in with this object. The default layout is uh, something that is very useful. And that basically is if there are moving parts to an object, you can move them around and save more than one layer. Then there's the angle. So if you want to preview this at different angles, you can always add a new angle like this. Uh, you can just go uh, apply angle to object uh, and then click on the thumbnail, right? And then let's say that we turn this angle around like that. Go new angle, save object angle, and apply that. And so now these two angles, let's say uh, apply angle to object, and then that one apply angle to object, we've now set that camera at two different angles for two different previews. And the final button is movability. And so if you have any bones or moving parts in an object, you can move them around. Uh, you can add a, a new set of uh, sliders if you if you wanted and you can toggle between two states of a particular movability and you can add a lot of them so let's for example say that all these windows were openable you could go in and add a different movability slider for each of these windows and when you bring that into clip studio paint all of those movability sliders will be available as variants and that you can use the interface in Clip Studio Paint to open one or all of the windows in various configurations. Now, how do we get this apartment block into Clip Studio Paint? Well, that all has to do with registering it as a material. Now, this little uh, double arrow here, I shut down just so we can get maximum uh, real estate on our desktop, but now I'm gonna open that up. And what I've got here is our familiar uh, materials folder where you can see that all of your materials in Clip Studio Paint are showing up here. What we want to focus on is 3D. Now if we open that up we've got a lot of um, our own categories but you can even add your own. So if I right click there on 3D and go create new I can create a new folder and I'm going to call this apartment. Yep there we go. And now here what we do is we just go file, register as new material, and you'll automatically see that there's no image. And so if we do want an image to recognize what this is, let's cancel that for a second. We go back to sketch, we click on where it says no image, and a thumbnail is generated. 
we go complete. Now we've got a thumbnail. We go back to register new material. Now we've got a thumbnail and we can call this apartment. We scroll down to 3D to where we've got our apartment folder. We can even put in a couple of search tags if we wanted to. Let's just say apartment, right? And then we hit OK. That is now a 3D object that is saved to our library. So let's now go to paint and let's create a new canvas. I'm just gonna make a very simple one and let's uh, navigate to our 3D materials apartment and there is our apartment object that we registered. We just drag and drop that uh, and you can already see, well, that was the default angle <laughs> as it were. Um, and now this apartment is manipulatable inside of Clip Studio Paint. Mm -hmm.